Well, good Thursday morning to you. It's it's the end of our week together. Um, I won't be doing Fridays anymore. It just isn't working in the schedule right. So we'll be here on Sunday mornings for church and then Monday through Thursday with our, our psalm study in Lent. Today we're going to catch the Lent study that we should have done yesterday. Um, my, my week's all messed up this week and I don't know why. But I've been having trouble keeping track of days and time and all kinds of stuff. So, um, I don't know. It's just me. So, we are uh, in Mark 10 this morning. And so, uh, Mark 10, and we're going to start in verse 17. And this, again, is a familiar story to a lot of us. But uh, it's one that we need reminding of. Um, when we get into Lent and we start getting into that, um, working our way to the cross and to the, to the resurrection, the story kind of narrows down and we find ourselves covering the same scriptures a lot each year because we're telling the same story, um, uh, in this last week or so of Jesus's life. So, uh, even though they're familiar and we think we've heard them, we need to hear them again because um, we're probably not carrying them out uh, exactly the way maybe we should. So it's always a good reminder. And, uh, and so uh, the rich young ruler is our story today from Mark 10, verse 17. As Jesus was starting out on his way to Jerusalem, a man came running up to him, knelt down and asked, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus asked. Only God is truly good. But to answer your question, you know the commandments. You must not murder. You must not commit adultery. You must not steal. You must not testify falsely. You must not cheat anyone. Honor your father and mother. Teacher, the man replied, I've obeyed all these commandments since I was young. Looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. There is still one thing you haven't done, he told him. Go and sell all your possessions and give the money to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come and follow me. At this, the man's face fell, and he went away sad for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, how hard it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. This amazed them, but Jesus answered, dear children, it is very hard to enter the kingdom of God. In fact, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were astonished then who in the world can be saved, they asked. Jesus looked at them intently and said, Humanly speaking, it is impossible, but not with God. Everything is possible with God. Then Peter began to speak up. We've given up everything to follow you, he said. Yes, Jesus replied, and I assure you that everyone who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or property for my sake and for the good news, will receive now in return a hundred times as many houses, teachers, sisters, brothers, children, and property, along with persecution. And in the world to come, that person will have eternal life. But many who are the greatest now will be the least important then, and those who earn, seem least important now will be greatest then. So again, it's a familiar story, a familiar passage, and we always think we have it all figured out. And But we sometimes miss the fact that we fit in this story very, very well. And um, we are <clears throat> the rich young ruler. And some of you are sitting here, oh yeah, Jeff, have you seen my bank account? <laughs> well, we are rich, and we just don't realize it. And the thing that I want to get to before I get there is just the very fact that this guy is rich and 
he comes running up to Jesus with a question. And that question is, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What must I do to be saved? And that is the best question that anybody can ask in the entire world. It's the best question ever because that is the ultimate question. The rich young ruler understood that this life was not all there was. He knew there was a next life. So how do I get there? What do I need to do to get there? And Jesus answers him uh, with just quoting the Ten Commandments because he knew this guy was a, a, a probably a Jew and a good Jew, and he, which meant he followed the Ten Commandments, he obeyed the laws, he did everything he was supposed to, and Jesus points out the Ten Commandments to obey those. And the guy's response is, I have obeyed all these commandments since I was young. He's obeyed them all. There evidently are no mistakes there. He hasn't missed any of them. I find it interesting that the last one that Jesus mentions is honor your father and mother. Uh, did this guy never have a fight with his parents? Did he never argue with them or get, you know, there's just this, there's this thinking in the, in the ruler himself that he's really good. And he really has his act all together. He's really a good person. And so Jesus then goes to the heart of this young man's issues. And it's not, it's not, it is, but it isn't necessarily the heart, the issue of all of our hearts. But in this particular case, Jesus tells this young man that he needs to sell everything he has. Go and sell all of your possessions and give the money to the poor. And then, he says, you'll have treasure in heaven. And then come and follow me. So get rid of everything in your life. Get rid of everything that you find of value. Give it to the poor people who, as a rich person in this society, you don't associate with, you don't know. In fact, you could be one of those people who would cross the street when you saw a poor person so as not to get near them and be defiled. Give your money to those people and then come and follow me. Now, the rich young ruler's face falls. His face fell. It, he became very sad, very disappointed. And um, he just said, you know, I, I can't do that. I've got too much stuff. I've got too many possessions to give them up. That's my, that's my security. That's my, it's my identity. It's, um, it's, those things are just too, too important, too valuable for me to give up. <clears throat> and so it's interesting because this guy, if he's rich and he's young, uh, he's in a pretty good spot. But to come up to Jesus and even ask him this question indicates that there's something inside this man that isn't satisfied. There's something inside of him that he knows is still missing. Otherwise, he wouldn't have asked the question. He's rich and he's young. He was happy. He could buy whatever he wanted. He, he's young. He can go wherever he wants, do whatever. It, but there's something inside of him that's that's making him ask this question. What am I missing? What do I need for eternal life? There's, this life isn't as fulfilling as I thought it was gonna be. There's an emptiness there. 
But then Jesus gives him his answer. And Jesus isn't being mean. Because in verse 21, Jesus says, looking at the man, Jesus felt genuine love for him. Jesus really was giving this man the answer that he really needed to hear because Jesus loved him. And so because Jesus loved him, he told him the truth. And he said, you need to get rid of your stuff because it's that stuff that's really blocking you from what you need. It's that stuff that you're, you're finding your confidence in. It's that stuff that your security's in. It's that stuff that your comfort is in. And it's that stuff that's really keeping you from God. It's that stuff that's really keeping you from the poor people, from helping others. But when it came right down to it, the stuff was too important. And the rich young ruler walked away. The thing that I always point out to people in this parable is Jesus didn't suddenly... Whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Stop, come here, come here, come here. Okay, listen. Let's, here, let's not say all, let's just say half. Let's just say half your possessions. See, Jesus wasn't going to compromise the truth. Wasn't going to compromise the truth with the rich young ruler, and he won't compromise the truth with you and I today. You and I are rich. Doesn't matter what your bank account says. If you live in America, by worldly standards, you and I are rich. The average daily income worldwide in many countries is a dollar or two dollars a day for hard labor. We have poor people in America that live better than free people in some of our third world countries. And I'm not trying to glamorize being poor in America. I'm saying America has safety nets. We have, people have access to um, help. They have access to health care. There are free people in, in parts of the world that have no health care. And so we in America are rich. And so this parable applies, this story applies to you and to me. And we need to be asking ourselves, how much are our riches getting in the way? And some of you can say, well, you haven't seen my bank account. You don't know the bills that I'm paying. Look at what we're striving for. Look at how hard we're working to get money to pay for stuff that probably, I know I've got stuff I don't need. But I'm working. I retired and I'm back working. Because I like the money. And I like the stuff that the money provides. And so let me be clear that Jesus points out in the scriptures there's nothing wrong with having stuff and there's nothing wrong with being rich. But when those riches and that stuff gets in the way of our relationship with God, then that's when it's wrong. Solomon was the richest man in the world, and he was blessed to build the temple. But if you follow Solomon's story, his riches also and his stuff and his led him to walk to 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 uh, to turn away from God in his ways. Our riches can be a distraction. We have people today who are, we fight for our comfort. We fight for our security. Do we fight for our faith in God? Do we trust God? Remember what the Psalms was yesterday, Psalms 108. I was going to have that ready. But Psalm, David started out, my confidence is in God. Is your confidence in God or is it in your 401k? Is your confidence in God or is it in your political party? You know, what's your confidence in? And so I, that's what Jesus is getting to with this rich young ruler. He knew his heart and he knew that the stuff was too important to this rich young ruler. I, I'm, I know people who are very blessed with money and stuff 
and it doesn't interfere with their walk with God because they understand that God has blessed them to be a blessing to others. And they use their money very wisely and very generously to help build the kingdom of God. It's not the riches. It's not how much money's in your bank account. It's how much of it's getting in the way between you and God. Which one are you working the hardest for? Which one are you putting your trust in the most? And the rich young ruler proved Jesus is, um, Jesus wasn't assuming Jesus knows everything, <laughs> but he proved his assumption that the rich young ruler had his confidence in his stuff. It's scary. It would have been scary to be in his place to walk away from all of those riches, to get rid of everything, and then to follow Jesus. Because anybody who followed Jesus, they didn't know where they were going. They just knew they were going to follow him, but they never knew where they were going. They didn't know where they were staying. They didn't know when their next meal was coming from. To follow Jesus can be scary. And the rich young ruler to give up everything and then not know how he was going to be taken care of was really scary. And so he chose to put his confidence in his stuff that he could see, that he could hold on to. You and I are faced with that same thing today. How much are we trusting in our stuff rather than God? How much are we afraid to let go of something because we don't know what God is going to do? This story is for you and me. Doesn't matter how many times you've heard it before, it's a reminder, it's for you and me. We need to look in the mirror, we need to examine our hearts, and we need to see what's getting in the way of our relationship and our trust with God. And it's probably not the number of zeros in your bank account, it's how you're using those. It's not how much is in your bank account, it's where your confidence is. This rich young ruler couldn't trust Jesus. And that's the question that's being asked of you and me this morning. Can you trust Jesus? If you needed to walk away from everything, would Jesus still be enough? Or is your faith like many of ours, many of us, we, it's Jesus plus my stuff. The rich young ruler's day, this is, what, this is what confused the disciples because rich people were appear, in that day were blessed by God because they had stuff. God loved you and was blessing you because you had stuff. And so the disciples were confused that rich people couldn't get into heaven because they thought that was a blessing from God. And Jesus is saying, nope. <laughs> it's Jesus plus nothing. That's what we were talking about with the journey kids last night. How do you get to heaven? What, what's the way to heaven? Jesus plus nothing. And so wrestle with that one today. Um, wrestle with where your heart's at and make sure that there's nothing in the way of your relationship. There's nothing that you're holding on to that's keeping you being committed to and confident in Jesus. Father, we thank you again for the reminder of this story. <clears throat> Just help us to examine our hearts today and help us to be honest with ourselves. And if there's something in the way of our relationship with you, help us to realize it's not worth hanging on to. Help us to put our confidence in you and you alone. And that's just a scary thing to say. Because we don't know what would happen if we gave up everything. But that's what you're calling us to do. Anything that gets in the way, anything that we're putting our hope and confidence in, God, help us to see it, to speak it, to get rid of it. Help us be committed to you, to follow you, wherever that might lead. In Jesus' name. Amen.
So thanks for joining us. Good to see you, Bill and Sherry and Gail and Steve. Um, have a great day. Um, like I said, this is the last day of the week. I will see you Sunday morning, uh, Palm Sunday. I'm excited. The kids are going to be back in church this Sunday, and they'll be walking up and down the aisles, waving their palm branches. We'll be, it'll almost be back. It'll be like getting back to normal. Um, it's been a year uh, as for everybody. And so every time we start getting something back, it's so exciting. So hope you'll join us on Sunday at 9. And until then, we'll see you. Love you guys. Bye-bye.